question is over the basics of polynomials, or sorry, polygons, not polynomials, way easier than polynomials. Uh, the objective students to be able to classify a polygon, determine if it's convex or concave, and find the missing angles in a quadrilateral. So what is a polygon? A polygon is a closed plane figure with at least three sides that are segments, no curves. Um, the second thing, each segment intersects exactly, oh, that kind of covers it up. Um, each segment intersects exactly two other segments at their end point. Um, so basically what they're saying with that second thing is they can't intersect in the middle, they can't cross each other. Um, so this first one is a polygon. April Diaz, please report to the Welcome Center. April Diaz to the Welcome Center. This one is not because it doesn't, it's not enclosed. It's not enclosed at all. It's open. They don't touch each other. So this is not a polygon. This one's not because they intersect right here. If you wanted to look at each individual thing, this part is polygon, this part's a polygon, but if you're looking at the whole shape, you can't intersect at all. And that's what they're talking about, this next one that you can't really see, what they say here. Um, it's that they intersect, this one's not. And the other thing, this one, it has a curve, it almost is, but there is no curve, it's gotta be segments. So naming polygons, now we did this already before, um, so hopefully you know most of these, but we have three sides of the triangle four sides of the quadrilateral, and remember, we went into a little bit more depth with that, talked about rectangles, squares, um, rhombuses, kites, uh, trapezoids, but those are all four sides, those are all quadrilaterals. Five is pentagon, hopefully you guys knew that one, six is a hexagon, seven is an interesting one, heptagon, we haven't had that for a while, that's a little bit of a unique one, or one that's not as common, I should say. Eight, everyone knows, is an octagon from stop signs. Nine is a nonagon, 10 is a decagon, 11, I had to look this up, I've never actually seen this, is a hendicagon, 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 I think that's how it's said, hendicagon, and 12 is a dodecagon, I like that one, that'd be a really good heavy metal band name. Now, anything after that is just n-gons, if you have 13 sides, it's just a 13 gon. If you had one that was 45 sides, it would be a 45 gone. If you had one that was 1,000 sides, it'd be a 1,000 gone. So hopefully you have those on the test because those will be the easier ones. So naming a polygon, um, make sure when you name your polygon, it doesn't matter what vertex you start at, but then you have to either go clockwise or counterclockwise. You can't cross over. Um, so you can name this pentagon. You can start with C and you can name it either C, B, A, E, D. Or you could go the opposite way and go, this is pentagon C, D, E, A, B, but you could not go C, A, D, B, E. You're not going to be able to do it that way. Um, so the way that I like to think about it is I like to pick where I start. So if I start at C or anywhere, let's start, since I just did C, let's start at E. And then I just follow this path. So it doesn't matter where you go, but you have to follow this path around. I usually go clockwise just because... I kind of always try to do it the same, but again, it doesn't matter which way you go. So name three polygons that are pictured. Name each polygon by the number of sides and its vertices. So you might look at this and say, but there's only one polygon. Well, the thing they're getting at is you have obviously one big one is a pentagon. So that's pentagon. And again, it doesn't matter where you start. I'm going to start with L just because. L, M, N, O, P. So that's the first one. But then also, if you look, we have a triangle over here. So that is triangle. And I just like to put the symbol for a triangle. Tyler Reese, report to athletics. Tyler Reese. Sorry, a lot of announcements here at the end of the day. Triangle is M, N, L. Or again, you could say M, L, N. Doesn't matter. And last but not least, we have this shape over here. And that is a quadrilateral. There's four sides, so quadrilateral. And then it doesn't matter where you start. I'll start with P, and then let's go the opposite way. P-O-N-L. That's how you label those. So the next thing we have, convex versus concave. Um, now this is one that is, honestly, I think it's just easier to look at to be able to tell. A concave has one or more vertices that are caving in, um, so they're going inward. Convex is where all the vertices are pointing out. 
So this is concave when you have some that are going inward. This is convex. Um, again, there's several other ways that people talk about this. Um, I know some people say that if you take one straight line and go through a polygon, if it's concave, sorry, if it's convex, you'll only touch the polygon twice. So no matter where I put an exact straight line, it only hits twice. But over here, if I draw a straight line, it could hit this one one, two, three, four times. That means it's got to be concave. Now, again, the caving in is in parentheses because that's why they call it concave, because it's caved in on the side. But again, honestly, as much as you want to try to describe and say tricks for this, I think it's the easiest way. I mean, if you look at it, it's caved in, it's concave. Um, so we just talked about that. The other way you could look at it, should have made this bigger, all the diagonals of a convex polygon lie entirely inside the polygon. So if we go back over here and start over quick, all these diagonals from here, oops, sorry, from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here, any of these diagonals, they're all completely inside your shape, completely inside your figure. But if you try over here, that one works fine. That one's okay. But then if you go from this one over here, now all of a sudden we have a part that's outside. Um, you can't have that. So again, that's another way to do it. But honestly, I'm hoping if you just see it, that'll work out. Um, let me just skip that. I think if you want to read through that, I think it's another thing that you can look at um, that's talking about the difference between concave and convex. So um, we're going to name the polygon and say if it's concave or convex. Um, this polygon is a pentagon and it is convex, not concave. This is, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sides, so it's an octagon, and it is convex. Now, if you ever have to name these, especially if it has a lot of sides, I like to number them like that because if you don't, a lot of times if you just point at them, you accidentally count one of them twice. So I like to make a little mark or just number them. Um, this one, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is a decagon, and it is concave. These are caved inward. Oh, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a nonagon, and it's most definitely concave. This one we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's that heptagon, and it is also concave. Full part in here. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a hexagon and it is convex. So the next thing, how many triangles can you create in each quadrilateral? So if you start at one corner, how many triangles can you make? Well, if you draw this here, that's one, two triangles. If you start at this corner, that's two triangles. If you start at a different corner, it's the same. Start another corner, that's two. That's two, two, two. All of these end up giving you two triangles. Um, so the whole idea of that is the sum of the interior angles in a triangle we said was 180 degrees. Well, if you have two triangles in one of those, then all of a sudden you have twice as many degrees. So the sum of the interior angles on in a quadrilateral is 360. So remember back um, earlier in like chapter five when I give you a triangle and I say this side was 30, this side is 70, so what's this top angle here? Well, you guys would all say, well, they add up to be 180. 30 plus 70 is 100, so that means this X has to be 80. It's the same exact thing we're doing now, except for now it's going to be quadrilateral. And instead of adding up to 180, they all add up to be 360. It's the same exact concept. So you can also do this for anything. Um, so I can go from here and say that's one. So we have one, two, three. So three times 180 would be the number of the, what the degrees, the angles would add up into a pentagon. You need something? I don't think so. No problem. Sorry about that. Um, so three times 180. 
So in a pentagon, the angles, the interior angles, these angles in here, all add up to be 540. Um, a hexagon, you do the same thing with a 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 times 180, uh, they all add up to 720. And you can do the same thing with a 12-sided one. So this is what I was talking about, where all these angles have to add up to be 360. So just add all of them up. We have 93 plus 76 plus 11x minus 2 plus 14x minus 7. When you add all those together, that has to be 360. So again, we added 93, 76, 11x minus 2, 14x minus 7. That's the hard part of this, setting it up. Because now it's just combine your like terms. So anything that doesn't have an x, so we have 93 plus 76 plus negative 2 or minus 2 minus 7 is 160. Then the ones with the x, we have 11 and 14. So that's 25x is equal to 360. And now all of a sudden we just have a two-step equation. Subtract 160, subtract 160. 25x is equal to 360 minus 160 is 200. Divide by 25. x is equal to 8. So that's what they're asking you for, solving for x. If they ever said, like, um, find out what angle m is, you just take that 8 and plug it back in here. So 11 times 8 is 88, minus 2 is 86. So I know this would be 86 degrees. I don't think they ask that very often, but just in case. So how about this one? Well, again, they don't give you this angle measurement, but we know that's 90 degrees. That's what that means. So we have 90 plus 84 plus 2x plus 118 plus 2x plus 68 is all equal to 360. And again, go through and add together all your like terms, 90, 84, 118, 68. Interesting. 2x and 2x is 4x is equal to 30, 60. Um, so when we subtract, yeah, uh, so some of you guys are probably seeing why I'm trying to think about this, see if I made a mistake, because when you subtract 360, you're getting 4x is equal to 0. Um, so divide both sides by 4, you end up getting x is equal to 0, which is correct. Oh. Yeah, okay. No, that's fine. Okay, we're good. We're on, we're on pace now. Yeah, x is 0, because if you'd plug 0 in, that means this one would be 118. This one would be 68, and if you add those together, 84, 118, 68, and 90, this should give you 360. 84 plus 118 plus 68 plus 90. Yeah, it gives you 360. So 0 is an absolutely fine number. Um, so do this one on your own. Again, um, hit pause so you can do this one, and then hit play so you can see your answer. We have 85 plus x plus 37 plus 6x plus 22 plus 69. So we have 85 plus 37 plus 22 plus 69 is 213 plus 7x is equal to 360. Track 213 from both sides. 360 minus 213 is 147. Divide by 7. You're going to getting x is 21. All right, so last but not least, um, quadrilateral polygons, so some more vocab. Quadrilateral is when all the sides are congruent. So lateral is meaning sides. Um, if that's not clear, hopefully you don't get it mixed up with equiangular. means all the angles are congruent. That one makes a little bit more sense. Then if you have a regular polygon, we talked about this when we talked about pyramids, regular polygons, all the sides, and all the angles are congruent. So both, it's equilateral and equiangular. Now, here's the hint that I gave you. Um, 
For this stuff, when they ask you about equilateral, equal angle, and regular, make sure it's only when it's marked. If they're marked congruent, that's the only time you can assume that they're congruent. Um, other times it's a little bit different, but for this stuff, most definitely. So this one is equilateral because they mark all the sides are congruent. Now obviously it's not equal angular. This angle is way smaller than this angle. This one is going to be a regular polygon because it's both. All the angles are marked congruent and all the sides are marked congruent. And this one is equiangular. Again, obviously the sides are congruent, but all the angles are. Um, this was a equilateral. Again, the angles are not congruent, but the sides are. And this one, and this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, they look exactly the same, but the difference is maybe this isn't quite, maybe this angle right here, maybe you can't tell with your naked eye, but maybe that's like uh, 76 degrees and this one's 75.5 degrees and you just can't tell. So that's why if I'm asking you about equal angular, equilateral, and regular, make sure you only mark it if it is marked. So these are all marked, so obviously those are all congruent. Um, so the one on the left here is none because we can't tell. It certainly looks regular, but we can't tell. And this one is a regular polygon. All right, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to email or ask.